Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to our virtual meet and greet with Myra Stanfield, the Connecticut Kid Governor 2020. I'm so excited to have her here today at the Kinley Public Library. Um, we are um, doing many virtual programs at this time, story times, book clubs, kindness clubs, and we're just trying to reach out to our community in any way that we can. And I'm so happy that um, we're able to do this virtual event today. And I welcome you to um, ask questions and to interact with the program. And I am very excited to have everyone here today. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Whiston. Uh, we really appreciate you and the Killingly, Killingly Public Library hosting today's Kid Governor Library Circuit program. Uh, my name is Jacob Orca, and I work at the Connecticut Democracy Center at Connecticut's Old State House in Hartford. Uh, our organization provides a lifetime pathway to active citizenship and the tools to take civic action. One of our primary ways of doing this is through the Kid Governor Program. Uh, if you're not already familiar with the Kid Governor Program, it is a statewide civics program that teaches fifth graders all about how state government and elections work and how they can make a difference in their communities through a real election for a kid governor. Uh, we believe that each of us, no matter how old we are, can make a difference and kid governor empowers our state's fifth graders to change the world. Kid governor is a free program uh, and I hope that fifth graders, teachers, or parents who are watching today will talk to their local teachers and, and encourage them to participate in the election this fall. The next kid governor could be from your town. You can learn more about the kid about Kid Governor on our website ct.kidgovernor.org. Uh, adults, you can also learn about us by following Connecticut's Kid Governor on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Today, you will get to meet your 2020 Connecticut's Kid Governor, Myra Stanfield. Myra was elected last November by thousands of fifth graders across the state, and is in the middle of her one-year term as Kid Governor. Uh, she ran on the platform of standing up for animals in need. She will tell you about her platform, her work as kid governor, fun experiences she has had, and how you can help her stand up for animals. Even with the quarantine and the pandemic, Myra has remained very active, doing a lot of work and appearances virtually. Uh, today's program is the sixth and final stop on her statewide library circuit to raise awareness of her platform. Uh, she is so excited to be talking with all of you turning in from Killingly and other parts of the state. Throughout the program, I hope you will share your questions for Kid Governor Myra in the chat. We will do our best to have Myra answer them during our Q&A segment. And without further ado, it is my sincere privilege to introduce your 2020 Connecticut's Kid Governor, Myra Stanfield. Hello, thank you so much, Ms. Whiston and the Killingly Library for hosting me today. I am really excited to get to speak to kids and adults in Killingly. My name is Myra Stanfield and I'm your 2020 Connecticut's Kid Governor. I was elected as Kid Governor last fall while I was a fifth grader at Norfolk Elementary School in West Hartford. I'm now sixth grader at King Philip Middle School in West Hartford, Connecticut. When fifth graders run to be Connecticut's Kid Governor, they need to choose a community issue that they want to work on if elected. I ran on Kid Governor on the platform I ran for Kid Governor on the platform of standing up for animals in need because I think that all animals deserve protection in loving homes. I'm nearing the end of my one year term as Kid Governor and I've had a very busy year even with the pan distance learning during the pandemic. I'm excited to talk with you today about my platform, what I have achieved during my term and how you can support my campaign. As I said before, I chose the platform of standing up for animals in need because I think that animals deserve more care than they are getting. Many people take advantage of animals, and I do not think that it's fair to the animals to do so. I want to minimize animal abuse in our state and in other places as well. I also hope to get more shelter pets adopted. I want them to find loving homes like so many other lucky dogs, cats, and more have. When running for kid governor, you also have to create a three-point platform with ways that other kids can support your platform and make a difference on your community issue if you are elected. My three-point plan was designed to support my Standing Up for Animals in Need platform. My first point is to inform and educate kids about companion animals in need and how they can help these animals. My goal is to raise awareness of the many animals in need in our state and of animal cruelty. 
My second point is to encourage collections and donations for local animal shelters to make shelter pets feel loved. My goal is for students and others to donate to shelters in their communities and help them out as much as possible. And my final point is to hold a statewide pet adoption event to try and get as many adopt pets adopted as possible. I'm so grateful to have accomplished my three-point plan, and I'm also extremely grateful to those who have donated, adopted, or fostered a pet in support of my platform. I will now tell you more about how I've achieved each of my platform points. To accomplish my first point focused on informing and educating kids about animals in need, I decided to record an educational video. I interviewed Ashley Marshall from the Connecticut Humane Society, who you can see in this picture, all about animal shelters and how they help pets. We did the interview in my office at Connecticut's Old State House in Hartford. It was really fun to work with her. She had really interesting things to say. When I went with Miss Marshall to the Humane Society in Newington, I got to meet lots of pets available available for adoption and fell in love with Mateo the Chihuahua, who you can see on the screen. My family and I ended up adopting him and now he has a loving home with us in West Hartford. In the end, my friends at the Connecticut Democracy Center at Connecticut's Old State House and I released four videos of our interview. The first is on why animal shelters are important. The second is about how shelters care for animals. The third is on what you need to know about animal adoption. And the fourth is about how you can help animals in need. I am excited to show you one of these videos today. We are going to watch the fourth video in the series, How You Can Help Animals in Need. I'm your 2020 Connecticut's Kid Governor, Myra Stanfield, and I'm here interviewing Ashley Marshall from the Connecticut Humane Society about companion animals in shelters. Thank you so much for being here today, Ms. Marshall. Thank you for having me, Myra. Where do shelters get their funding, and do you rely on public do donations? So every shelter and rescue organization is different in where they get their funding from. Um, CHS, we rely on private donations from the public. Um, we're not associated with any government agencies, so the state of Connecticut doesn't give us any money and neither does the feather, uh, federal government. And uh, we're also not associated with any national organizations like the Humane Society of the United States or um, the ASPCA. We're a private nonprofit organization, so all of our donations come from the public and all of those donations 100% go to the pets. What other types of donations do shelters accept? Um, so, most shelters accept money, monetary donations, um, but we also accept lots of supplies. So, we have a wish list on our website, and it tells the most needed items. Um, so, a lot of the times that's cat litter um, for our cats, toys, bones, food is always an important one. Lots of types of food are needed. Um, and then not forgetting our small animals. So they need toys and uh, treats just like our big guys. So those are always good things to donate. What can kids in schools do to help and support their local humane societies and shelters? So there's a variety of things um, that students can do. Um, you do have to be 18 to volunteer in the shelter um, at the Connecticut Humane Society. There's other organizations where that is different, um, but at our locations you have to be 18. So volunteering outside of the shelter, whether that be hosting a supply drive, so collecting toys, food, cat litter, um, are great ways in your school to kind of get involved, and then either dropping those off or picking them up. Um, and then you can also do a fundraiser, so a school dance, which you did, um, is a great way to raise money for the pets. Uh, you can also do like a pajama day and have students pay a dollar or two to wear their favorite pajamas to school, and that money can support the pets. Um, and then also we have craft projects on our website, so making cat scratchers at home or dog beds or pet bandanas. Uh, and then you can also do a lemonade stand. So in the summer, we do a lemonade stand challenge, uh, and you can have a lemonade stand in support of the pets. Thank you again for coming here today to answer all of my questions, and thank you guys for doing your part to stand up for animals in need. I hope you enjoyed the video. There are three others and they all have really important information about helping animals. I hope you will go to ct.kidgovernor.org to watch them.
Please share them with your friends, family, and other kids you know. My second point is all about encouraging collections and donations for local animal shelters. I really wanted my fellow fifth graders to help animal organizations in their communities. In my own school, we had a dance for the fifth graders. We raised $700 in total, and it was also super fun. I also partnered with Department of Children and Families, Paws for Kids, and Connecticut Family Day to have a poster contest. The contest was all about what kids and their families can do to help animals in need in our community communities and show them kindness. The winning design on the screen was submitted by Braylon Paddock from Center School in East Hampton. We loved her super colorful design and she did a great job portraying the message that we wanted to send. It will be used to encourage people all across Connecticut to help animals and support their local shelters. Braylon and the 12 statewide runner-ups will be recognized at Connecticut Family Day in a few weeks. Although students were not in school in the spring and could not hold collection drives, I still encourage supporting local shelters through my educational videos, blog, and virtual meetings. It has been great to hear how many people are making donations and helping to make shelter pets feel loved. Donations to shelters are really needed during this time. Even a small amount would be greatly appreciated. Most shelters will accept food, cleaning supplies, treats, litter, and more. I hope you will contact your local shelter or Humane Society to see what items they need. It will, they will also accept money to purchase items that they need if you would like to contribute. My third point is to hold a statewide pet adoption event to help lots of pets find their forever homes. We weren't sure if an adoption event was going to be possible because of the pandemic, but we found a creative way to do it. We were able to have a virtual pet adoption meet and greet. We held it at the end of August in the Connecticut's Kid Governor Facebook page and YouTube channel. Many people watched and a bunch of pets were adopted and I'm so, so grateful to the people who gave the pet a loving home. I also want to thank all of the organizations who participated. The Connecticut Humane Society, Connecticut Cat Connection, Friends of the New Haven Animal Shelter, Dog Star Rescue, and Pack Leaders Rescue all participated and introduced animals they had for adoption. I am also extremely grateful to Mr. Co-Francesco of the Kid Governor Program and NBC Connecticut Telemundo for helping pull everything together and making the event an amazing day for everyone. If you would like to watch the virtual pet adoption meet and, greet and see some really cute animals, you can go to youtube.com slash Connecticut Kid Governor for a recording. My term as Kid Governor has been awesome and totally different than expected. I would like to tell you about the friends that I have made, the places I've been, and the amazing opportunities I have gotten. As kid governor, I have a cabinet. You can see pictures of my cabinet on the screen. They are all the runner-ups for kid governor, and I've become awesome friends. We get to support each other on our platforms, have fun, and also discuss all sorts of interesting things, and we get to learn more about each other. The cabinet consists of six other students. If you look at our group picture on the right, I will introduce them to you left to right. Daisy is from Windsor and is helping us clean the earth. Her platform is focused on how we can minimize pollution. She was active during the quarantine, encouraging kids to plant trees for Earth Day. Derek is from Stonington, Southington sorry, and is working to improve the lives of children who are homeless. During the quarantine, he coordinated a food drive in his neighborhood to support people who are homeless in his community. Ariana is from Meriden, and her platform is focused on improving our mental health and preventing suicide. During the quarantine, she wrote blog posts and taught kids how they can take care of their own mental health. Kylie is from Stonington, and her platform is about trying to minimize electronic and technology use. During the quarantine, while students were spending a lot of time on devices, she made a video with suggestions for activities and games that don't involve technology. Lucy is from Toland, and she has a very important platform focused on trying to bring more diversity into schools and sports. And Dwayne, who is from Windsor, is working on how we can help children with autism and other disabilities in schools. Diversity is a huge part of our cabinet. We all look different and we all act different, but we are all friends and we support each other on our campaign issues. We have the privilege of meeting throughout the year to discuss what we have been doing to support our platforms. These are our cabinet meetings. They are really fun. We met in person before the pandemic and also had an online cabinet meeting. 
If you would like to learn about the cabinet and their platforms, you can visit ct.kidgovernor.org for more information. In January, the Connecticut Democracy Center held my official inauguration as Kid Governor at Connecticut's Old State House. It was an amazing event and so many important people were there to congratulate me and make me feel so special. In the top left photo are some elected officials who attended the event, including State Treasurer Sean Wooden, Governor Ned Lamont, Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz, and Secretary of the State Denise Merrill. The six members of my cabinet and all of our classes were there too, over 200 people in all. Secretary of State Denise Merrill gave me the official Kid Governor Oath of Office, as you can see in the top right photo. After my official inauguration, all of the students broke into groups to explore the old state house and meet people who actually work in the three branches of government. I was one of the representatives of the executive branch and I met all of the students in my office. It was such a memorable day for all of the students and for me too. Here are some more photos of the kid governor's office at the old state house. It is located in the old governor's office, which was used by Connecticut's adult governors in the 1800s. The kid governor's office has the cabinet's conference table in the middle where the cabinet meets, the kid governor's desk, a bookcase with civic books and photographs from my term, and the hall of kid governors with all of the previous kid governor's portraits. There's also an activity in the kid governor's office about my platform. We ask visitors to the museum to write how they can show kindness towards animals. We have received some great responses, and I'm going to ask you the same question later in today's program. I was really happy to, invited to, be, to be invited to speak at the Connecticut Association of Schools Elementary Arts Banquet, held at the Aquitur. The event celebrated different students my age who excel as artists. It was a super fun event, and I got to meet all sorts of talented students and spread word about the Kid Governor program. I was also invited to speak to all of the students, their parents, and their teachers to promote my poster contest. It was a huge honor to attend and speak, and I'm so glad that I got the chance to meet everyone there. The event was super fun. One of my first appearances as Kid Governor was the opening of the Connecticut General Assembly. That is the first day that the legislative branch meets to begin the process of making laws. My cabinet was invited to join me at the state capitol in Hartford, and Derek, Ariana, and Lucy were able to join. We got to watch the opening ceremony of the House of Representatives right from the floor of the House chamber. The four of us were introduced to all of the representatives, and we received a standing ovation. We also got to be in the room when Governor Lamont gave his State of the State address, telling elected officials and the people of Connecticut about his goals for the year. After the opening sessions, we had a private meeting with Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz. She was so friendly and so nice. She talked to us about female leaders of Connecticut and her experience as an elected official, and also about our individual platforms. She took the time to answer all of our questions. It was a very memorable day and a lot of fun to see state government in action. I was really honored when Senator Blumenthal invited me to attend his virtual meeting to discuss animal welfare. It was a huge honor and I'm so grateful to have been there. I got to learn about what people across Connecticut are doing to help animals in our state, particularly during the pandemic. It was really inspiring to see everyone working together to prevent animal cruelty and support pets in need. I hope you will all visit and subscribe to my blog. My blog is a place where I can update you guys on what I've been doing during my term and what I hope to accomplish. I've written posts about meetings I've had, my interviews with the Connecticut Humane Society, and how you can support animals in need during the pandemic. The members of my cabinet have also written blog posts about what they are up to and how you can support their work. You can find my blog posts at ctkgmyra.com. Dot blogspot dot com. Now I want to lead an activity for everyone attending the program from home. At my inauguration, we created an activity for people who visited my office at Connecticut's Old State House. We provided pencils and cards like this one that ask, how can you and your family show kindness to companion animals in your home or in shelters? 
The students and adults who attended my inauguration had the chance to write down their answers and people who visited the old state house gave their suggestions as well. I would like to read some of those responses, but before I do, I would love to hear from you. Please tell us in the comments how you can show kindness to animals either in your home or in a local animal shelter and I will share them. While you are thinking and submitting your answers, I want to hear from you with your questions. I'm going to invite Mr. Orca back on screen for a question and answer session. Mr. Orca, do you have any questions from the people watching the program from home? All right, Myra, we certainly do. Are you ready for some questions from uh, the folks in Killingway? Yes. All right. Uh, so the first question is, what has been your favorite moment so far as kid governor? I'm not, everything has been really special, um, eye-opening and I've had so many amazing experiences, it's really hard to choose just one. But I loved meeting um, Governor Lamont at my um, inauguration. He was really, he was a really interesting person and had lots of amazing things to say and he was really inspiring. And then I also love, love doing my library, the library circuits. Um, they're really fun and I get to hear from you guys with your opinions on Kid Governor, with your questions, how you guys think you can support animals in need in your homes, especially during the quarantine. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mara. That's a great answer. Uh, my next question for you is, do you know anyone else who has adopted or rescued pets? Um, definitely. I've, um, sm a lot of my classmates actually have, um, my little cousins, Charlotte and Lila, um, they actually adopted a little puppy a couple days ago, I think. She's so cute and I'm so happy for them. And then my teacher, Miss Heaton, she's actually adopted a puppy and a cat during this year. Um, and I'm so grateful to her as well for helping out and supporting my campaign. And of course, we have adopted a little puppy too. Well, speaking of that, you recently adopted Mateo, right? How's Mateo yeah. doing? Oh, he's doing great. Thank you. He um, He's getting along with our pets except for Coco the cat. She's still not very fond of him. Um, but he's getting along with Oliver Gray. It's like they've been together their whole life, and they're really cute together uh, as friends. All right. Well, it does seem to be the nature of cats and dogs, right? Uh, your constituents want to know what inspired you to run for kid governor? I think a lot of different things inspired me to run. I think I mostly wanted to make a difference, but like my biggest inspiration was probably the 2019 to 2020 kid governor, Ella Briggs. In class, my, me and my classmates, we saw her um, campaign video and it was really interesting to see all the things she had to say and all of her support and passion for her campaign issue and she's a really inspiring person. That, that's fantastic and you know and I think all of our kid governors have been inspiring so next year you'll probably be inspiring people to uh, run for kid governor as well or I, I should say this year the elections are coming up very soon. Yeah it's exciting. <laughs> Now, you talked a little bit earlier about having the chance to meet uh, Governor Ned Lamont. Have you had the chance to work with him at all? Actually, I have not, but I've seen him in action. He's a really smart person, really interesting, inspiring, impactful. And then also, I have also br I've briefly met him at my inauguration. Yeah, he's a really interesting person. I'm so grateful that I've gotten the chance to meet him. Well, terrific. Well, I've got a really hard hitting question for you here, and that is what is your favorite color? <laughs> I like the colors orange, green, and red. All right, excellent choices. Uh, and on a completely related note, do you think you will be running for elected office again as an adult? I'm actually not quite sure what the future has in store for me yet. Um, uh, there are definitely some jobs that I would be really interested in. An elected official is definitely up there, so we will, we will see. Oh, terrific. Well, you, you've got some time to, to figure it out. Definitely. Uh, what is the most important thing you have learned during your experience as Connecticut's kid governor? I think mostly it is that you can be whoever you want to be to make a difference. You don't have to be an adult. You can be a kid. You can be and yeah anybody, and you can still make a difference, big or little. It will still matter. 
All right, great, Myra. Thank you. I've got one last question for you here, okay. and that is, uh, what is one piece of advice you would give to the next kid governor? I think definitely be yourself, be passionate, don't be afraid of what people think of you. I think it's that, yeah, that's really important. And yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Myra. Uh, as always, we appreciate your answers to these questions from your constituents in our communities. Thank you, Mr. Orca. And thank you, everyone, for submitting those great questions. Here are some of the suggestions for showing kindness to animals from people who did the activity in my office at Connecticut's Old State House. Then I will read some of your responses from home. Elena from Glastonbury suggested feeding my fish playing with dogs and cats, not to tap on the glass at zoos and to take good care of my pets. Eliza from Stonington says you should adopt animals instead of buying them. Also, you can volunteer and or donate to animal shelters. And young gal from Meriden says you should donate toys, to help animals in shelters feel more comfortable. Here are some of the ideas for showing kindness that have been submitted by viewers today. Adopting senior pets from shelters to give them loving homes. Donating food and toys to local shelters. Making toys to donate for animals to enjoy. Volunteering with animals or shelter pets or foster pets. Holding fundraisers to collect money, food, and supplies for local shelters and rescue groups. Being kind and gentle around animals and treating them with respect. Reporting lost pets to the right people and shelters. If in a shelter, visit the animals regularly. And if you currently have pets, make sure to dedicate time to them every day. Make sure to tear up, sorry. <laughs> and that's it for today's library circuit program. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me this morning and learning about my Standing Up for Animals in Need platform. It was a lot of fun, fun to visit Killingly virtually, and thank you to Ms. Whiston and the Killingly Public Library for hosting me. If you